Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. June 7th, 2021. 25 minutes to go to the cash close here on this Monday afternoon with the S&Ps largely unchanged in the marketplace. The Nasdaq massively unchanged. The little engine that could, the Russell's got a nice bid under it to the tune of about 1.3%. You know, the conversation piece today is uh, surrounding much of technology and the possibility of a uh, of a tax minimum but uh, hey people look you know tech is up the nasdaq is still holding it together up about uh, 33 handles over here so uh from at least where i sit that is not impeding upon the marketplace at all in fact uh none other than the grind goes on what you're looking at right now on your screen is a 30-day one hour chart what have we done over the last 30 days? Absolutely nothing. But I'll tell you, the volatility is still decent in the overall marketplace, at least if you will, for a marketplace that isn't doing anything. And by that, I want to explain this a little bit more detail. If you take a look at the VIX, and the VIX is still sitting in the 16, you know, 16 half handle. The S&Ps are doing absolutely nothing. If you're selling options premium right now, you're making money. But Let's not go too detailed today into the selling of options premium. We're not even going to cover too much about different sectors. I want to focus specifically today on the energy sector. And that's exactly what we're going to do. The energy sector has had a rather consistent bid for a significant period of time on a year-to-date basis. Year-to-date basis, the energy sector. That's right. The XLE is up some 46%. All right, we're looking for a bit of a pullback now inside of this marketplace. And it doesn't have to do, you know, if you take a look at the energy sector and you try to uh, try to handicap like, well, is this thing going to pull back over here? That is not really what has brought us to this particular decision regarding the energy sector. Uh, in large part, it's a combination of things. Let me actually start over in, uh, in oil. So I don't want to get too commodity kind of crazy on you, but in some of the commodity products, specifically in oil, you get what we term contango and backwardation. But if you take a look at oil right now, and we look at, for example, you know, the July, which have approximately 15 days left, it's trading at 69.17. Uh, you go a little further out in time, we'll go out to the November oil contract. And in that November oil contract, you'll see it's actually trading for 67. So oil, in effect, is actually flipped over in this particular case. And it has been now for, well, some weeks. All right, this, okay, which is, again, into a backwardation compiled with the fact that the energy sector, if we take a look at this in terms of auto expected moves, energy has literally shattered, if you will, the upside of the expected move in last week. Again, I'm looking for at this point some normalization, if you will, inside of the oil contract itself a pullback at the exact same time in the energy sector. So as again, oil contracts kind of normalize and come out of that backwardation, maybe flatten out the curve a little bit, it'll likely possibly pull back the XLE, not to mention that the XLE, again, shattering its expected move gives you, I think, a little bit of a statistical edge at this point in the game. In order to place a trade like this, what kind of strategy could we use? You know, there's a number of things that kind of come to mind. One of the things I often look at, though, would be like, you know, the implied volatility ranking. And there's another way to look at implied volatility ranking. Can I actually bring it up uh, detailed in a chart here? When I'm talking about IV ranks, we're looking at not just pure implied volatility. Like anybody, you know, you can pull up an option chain and you come in here and say, yeah, man, implied volatility is like 30% or go a little further out in time. Yeah, implied volatility is like 31%. But that just doesn't give you a feel, okay, of where implied volatility has been, for instance, over the last year or over the last two years. Like, you can't just glance at implied volatility and have a feel for it, other than some people glance at, like, implied volatility, like, oh, man, look at look at AMC. It's the highest implied volatility I've ever seen, except if you looked at AMC every single day, you would see that implied volatility is actually contracted to a degree. So here in the energy sector, you're looking at about a 30% IV, but what I'm actually discussing here is implied volatility ranking, or what we call a current IV percentile specific to think or swim, and that's at 4%, which means that the implied volatility relative to all the instances of implied volatility over the last year, this is inherently low implied volatility. In fact, a 
better way to kind of denote this. Look, you can see 52 week low implied volatility has been roughly 30%. Yeah, it's pretty much where we're sitting right now. 52-week high implied volatility has been closer to 66%. So what that means is, you know, even though the markets are kind of stagnating right now, okay, and index implied volatility is 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 doing, you know, decent. If you start looking at the energy sector again, that's a little bit lackluster. And what that again kind of amounts to is, I'm not going to go out there and sell premium. In this particular case, I'm going to use an in-out spread. I'm going to net buyer of premium. The next thing that I often look at here, and I'll just go about a month out, I like to look at individual implied volatilities of each unique option. For example, if I were going out here and going to use an in-out spread, I might want to be, for instance, a, a buyer, a buyer of this. And when I say this, it's the 56 puts, which are trading for about 30.6 vol. Then I'd be turning around and selling something, oh, maybe right out here, which is, uh, again, none other than the 54s. I'd be a seller there. And you'll actually see there's even a slight implied volatility skew against me. Nevertheless, it'll still play. Like, again, if I think a pullback is coming, this is just a nice defined risk way to get into a position. Again, you're not going to be absorbing any more risk than you put into the position initially. So here is roughly a $2 widespread. Now, I'm going to tell you, listen, I wouldn't pay more than a $1 debit for this particular spread. The other aspect, and I'm a little bothered by this, but the energy sector is actually down uh, just mildly today. Now that's not really going to impede upon me too much, but listen, I am uh, I am ever the contrarian. I don't like to get into bearish positions, even if it is a short-term bearish position. You know, it's over the next 32 days, but you know, I'm, I'm you know again a very quantitative individual. I just don't not like to get into bearish positions on a down day in the marketplace. But 28 cents, I think, is neither here nor there. It's not even but a but a half a percent. Nevertheless. Okay. In a spread like this, I wouldn't pay more than a dollar for it. And the bid offer spreads are relatively tight. There's enough size to trade over here. Again, all this does for me is provides, again, a inexpensive shot to the downside. If by chance the XLE does pull back from current levels, right around $56, if it pulls back any time in the next month, okay, We'll have degrees of profitability in this particular position. Again, in a marketplace that's a little bit, if you will, lackluster, like well, today's trading session, we start to go into some of the sector kind of you know ETF areas and explore a couple of opportunities. And I think that opportunity lies very much inside of the energy sector at this point in time. Thanks everybody for joining us here at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening. Bye bye.